Welcome to the Mojo Market Report. Here's your hosts, Dave Sturgio and Chris Gucci. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode and edition of the Mojo Market Report right here on a Monday. It is Monday, March the 27th, 2023. I, March is gone. How did that happen? We're in really April is. in like a day or two. That's insane to me. Anyway, it is, as always, Dave Sturchio, Chris Gucci here at Chop Studios in Matawan, New Jersey. How was your weekend, buddy? Everything My good? My weekend was good. I mean... I had a whatnot 2.0 card show this I weekend. I saw that was, that was dope. awesome. We had 11 hours of streaming. card collectors out there. Pay attention; these yeah, guys are the, good. Check out the break buds. <laughs> so plugs. Great, good. great morning into early afternoon to early evening. Really, I mean, like 11 hour stream. I very, saw a post yesterday. Like, thanks for everybody for 11 hours. I'm like 11 yeah, hours. It was a tough good one. Good lord. Tough one, tough one. It took um, me also 11 hours to make that post. By the way. <laughs> that was you. Yeah, I'm very surprised at I that. Got, I, I started that at 2 p.m. <laughs> Got up Scheduled at like it for 10. 10. Dave yeah. knows how that Perfect. goes. Perfect. Yeah, social media is this guy's specialty. So uh, clearly, you probably see him all over the place on social media. It's almost kind of annoying how uh, how active you are on social media. But anyway, this has been a, a great sports weekend. We got to start off with this. I know, I know for a fact that Mojo is like right there with baseball. I know there's probably going to be a little bit of a liquid prop thing first, right? Kind of get the ball rolling, get the juices flowing. But as Yankee fans, as you can tell by the hat on my head, uh, very interesting, fun news yesterday with the emergence and call-up of one Anthony Volpe. Mm. That's the kind of guy that you, you root for. He's a Jersey dude. He's been raised on the Yankees, and here he is. Uh, he shoot, could be the sh- shoot starting the gap, shortstop. Baby, shoot the gap. Do you think he's going to start? I think he better start. It doesn't do? necessarily Look, no, no, have no, no, to no, happen. No, no, no. Let, me, let, me, let me just run this back here. You don't call a guy up with that talent level for him to sit the bench. Like, he needs reps. He's not up here to, to sit and watch. If he was going to sit and watch, he, we don't need a bench player. And now there's new rules with the service time and stuff. Like, he's in. That's it. Like, he's a New York Yankee starting shortstop, ladies and gentlemen. If he's not, then, Derek, I'm, then, I'm, Jeter. then I'm questioning things. Yeah. Um, the video was bro, great, by there the way. Was a, Talking Yanks, the um, John Boy, out there, the John Boy guys, yeah. they're out there putting out like old Volpe tweets, and then the the headline was back when Volpe was just one of us, <laughs> and it was like a, we lost him, ladies and gentlemen. Like, he's it gone. Just said, the, the tweet was Didi <laughs> with all thumbs down. I mean, come on. So he's a Yankee Kid's fan at heart. Bomb opening day. He gets uh, that'd be great. Uh, opening day is I believe Thursday against the San Francisco Giants. So obviously keep your eyes and ears open. Uh, you never know. Mojo has been dropping things left and right over there on the app. Uh, it's been a lot of fun to track the app. And you know what? Not for nothing. I have to give Mojo credit. Obviously, um, I look at the app every day just to see what drops. They're always dropping things, meaning like not not just news and nuggets, but like there was a line that was fourteen eighty seven. They dropped it down to twelve. Like they're always giving you a deal. They're basically saying, "Hey, here's free money, help. <laughs> you know, like, here's some help for you." Um, but of course, we got to start this weekend with March Madness, and we are down to the Final Four. We said it on Friday when we were talking about the Sweet 16 that by the time we spoke on Monday, we were going to have ourselves a Final Four, and we do. Florida Atlantic, number nine seed, will be taking on San Diego State, the five seed, and, of course, Miami, uh, the five seed, taking on UConn, the four. Just things that happened over the weekend just to get to this point. Uh, Jordan Miller absolutely balled out for Miami. He drops 27. That's his tournament high. Uh, so I was in on his over uh, over the weekend. It's really hard to to explain to you what I've done over the weekend because things just keep going. Yeah. You know, it's like fluid. Uh, but I definitely slapped that over. UConn beat the brakes off of Gonzaga. What happened to Gonzaga? I don't really understand it. That game wasn't even close. I don't UConn's think it was just built for the tournament they, right now. I read a lot of tweets and a lot of uh, analysis saying that the winner of that UConn Gonzaga match was going to win the championship. Yeah, I don't know what they're, it was. They're, they're I think built UConn, that tough. There was something where and I'm not going to get this stat right because I don't know the exact stat, but I know that one of our college basketball guys Toast mm. sent me a tweet and it was um you guys still communicate, huh? 21 <laughs> out of 22 we I have like a thing going where he, me and him really like baseball prospects, so we kind of have oh, our okay. sidebar going sure, for sure. a long time about it. I feel left out. FOMO. But he, but he put out a tweet that was um, 21 out of 22 of the the last at national champions fit a certain criteria. Going into the tournament, there was only four teams that fit that criteria. UConn one of them? And UConn was one of them, and Gonzaga was another one. But there was two other teams. I think it was Alabama, gone. The so, one seeds all dropped off the face of the earth over the weekend, which was insane to see um, that. I'm gonna, I'm, my pick is UConn. 
I mean, they they look like the powerhouse that is. Really going out going out on a limb. Yeah, I was gonna say your your minus money is insane. Uh, but the Florida Atlantic story, man. Look, the the win they had the other day, what you would be defined as a team effort. Four guys in their starting lineup in double digits. They're dogs, man. Every time I see an interview for one of these guys, I wonder where their coach is going to go next year. Right, <laughs> they get this. They get this run. He's going to go coach UConn next year <laughs> of next year's season. But I, I look at this Florida Atlantic team, and the story is fun, right? It's a nine seats. So nobody really saw this coming. But again, every interview. I, I'm a big interview guy. If you if you deliver a good post game interview, humble. And, and and just hungry and, and ready for that next round. That's what they've been doing every single round. So it's not like, like so like Travis Kelsey, right? Like you're a big Travis oh, Kelsey. Yeah. Guy. I love post, Travis Kelsey, but his interview post-game guy. interviews are just pfft. oh man, they 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 leave a left a lot yeah, to be I'm desired. I'm a big for. interview guy, but I, I I am though. Like <laughs> so what I funny, see dude. out of this team, out of this team, I see some dogs, and I see a lot of fight in this team. And listen, we'll preview more on Friday as it gets closer to the <laughs> Final Four weekend. But their chances against San Diego State. We'll see. We'll see. Um, upsetting uh, was Marquise Noel, who obviously made me a bunch of coin. I still think last he, week. I, I think he's still the only player in tournament history to have achieved certain stats, where it was like the the amount of assists co- coupled with the amount of points, even though they didn't make it two more games. Yeah. Insane um, tournament by him. He does double down on the performance. He had 30 points in the Elite Eight. He did everything he possibly could, but not enough for a Florida Atlantic. But you can't say enough about the guy. Um, he's obviously, the, uh, according to what I've read, he's the shortest man in the tournament. So guys like Muggsy was out there tweeting, like, you got this, bro. You know what I mean? Like, But listen, dog. He's got the dog in him. Do the x-ray. He's right here. Um, but, yeah, so that was the tournament. It was, again, very exciting stuff. We'll get more into it as we get closer to uh, – the final four day, which is uh, Saturday. Um, yeah, Saturday night's the games. I think it's like 6 and 8 or 6 and 8.30. And then obviously the national championship is one week from today to crown a 2023 national champion. All right, so we got to get into some of the stuff from the NBA. Now, look, I brought this up as a graphic so you all can understand what exactly what goes into this play-in tournament. We're about, what is it, seven, eight games left on everybody's schedule, right? So right now, that's obviously it's a blank bracket. We're on talking about March Madness. That's a blank bracket um, on how this works because of the specific teams that are falling off fast with not a lot of games to play. Chris, I got to ask you, what the hell happened to the Dallas Mavericks? They acquire Kyrie Irving, and then it's just implosion. They're three and seven in their last ten. They've lost four in a row. They are now not even in the ten spot. They're now on the outside, outside looking in. They can't even get into this tournament. Well, what the hell happened? I mean, I know. Is guys, it the obvious? Like, no, they, their their whole season is going to be under protest because Mark Cuban is not happy right now <laughs> about that not bad at call. All. No, it's the Kyrie Irving effect. Kyrie, if you look back. Outside of the Cleveland series where they beat Golden State and he had that amazing run, but it was a LeBron and Kyrie, mm-hmm. and it was like peak LeBron at that. At that, Kyrie has been. I, I've been on the a back and forth about Kyrie. Kyrie, the basketball player, a great player. Kyrie bringing what he brings to the team, other than his basketball skills, for whatever reason, you know, teams have played well when he's not been on the court. I don't think that they're a worse team because of Kyrie being there, per se. But it's the the exit of all the other guys and all those pieces that had Dallas, seemingly what was a playoff team at the very least, and then getting rid like of a all, six seed two weeks ago. Yeah, so getting rid of all your, but you know, like the way it was in the West, right? It's very could have been a twelve a, seed in a day game game so separation. Considering yeah. that they had all these pieces that they had to move off of to get Kyrie in town, now they're depleted other places. Mm. And I don't know. I mean, like I'm not a huge West basketball guy until the postseason starts. I don't really. It's hard for me to follow everything. But Dallas right now, look at their record since Kyrie got there. Is there really any other debate? It's not all on Kyrie. You got to put it on the GM or whoever's making but, the decisions. One of your one of your big things is that you said this is a star driven league, right? And they get rid of a bunch of pieces to bring in a star. And look, if you didn't think Kyrie Irving was a star, you're fooling yourself well, because he is. But because of all the extracurriculars and this, that, and the third, and what he's saying here, and how much he's against this, and blah blah blah, and sitting out half the games last year because of a vaccination status, like yeah, Kyrie's a pain in the ass. But like at the end of the day, Luca and Kyrie as a tandem is supposed to not look like this. No, this is weird, and, and it is still a star driven league. I guarantee they sold a ton of Kyrie jerseys. I'm sure. I they guarantee did. that they're having no issues selling tickets. No. So at the end of it. What are we talking about here? Well, we're talking about you know, on the business front. The sure, they're probably of, booming. The success of Kyrie move has probably made them a little bit of money. I guarantee you they weren't selling Dorian Finney-Smith jerseys. And I don't probably even not. know if he was in the trade. I'm just making a joke. 
This is just making a reference to any player ever outside of Kyrie. Look, I look at this, and I look, I'm a big um, a Dallas media guy because I, I follow the Cowboys as thoroughly as I do, and, and, and I've done a lot of work with the Cowboys and, and that Twitterverse. But that Twitterverse is also very heavy on the Mavericks, so I'm knee-deep in this. I see this stuff every day. These Dallas Mavericks fans are losing their minds right now trying to figure out what went wrong. And look, all signs point to Kyrie. And I'm not saying, again, he's a superstar. He's a good ball it's, player. He's the star he's just of the not, trade. It's going to come it's down. Not it's going gonna, it's gonna to fall on his shoulders, but they haven't meshed well as a team. Yeah, it's rough. Uh, it is a star-driven league, but Kyrie has been one of those stars that he just doesn't bring wins. So you're looking at um, about... Let's see, the 27th. I believe the tournament starts April 7th. So, like, we're looking at the last final two weeks of the NBA regular season. Tonight going down, keep your eyes out, obviously, on the liquid props and everything like that, but the games of significance are out there. Minnesota is scratching and clawing to stay up in the East. They got Sacramento tonight. The The Clippers take on Chicago. Obviously, the Clippers with a must-win as well. The West is so tight over there, and I'll go over this again because, again, it's it's fascinating to see. We know the Mavericks are down a game. Of that 10 spot. Uh, but between the Mavericks and all the way up to the five seed is a three-game difference with eight to play. So every single game from now until the very, very end is so significant for the West. that We could be seeing – I'm curious, just because I wrote it down, LeBron James did come back yesterday. Um, obviously, the, the Lakers lose, which well, stinks for him. But are to you, are the Lakers a threat now? They played well without him. Are the Lakers a threat to do anything in the West? Because as of right now, as we sit there today on a Monday morning, they're the nine spot. So technically they'd be playing the Thunder in the in the first play-in game because it's seven versus eight, nine versus ten, and then the rest is just jumbled on how that all goes. But if you're the 10 spot and you lose, you're done. If you're the uh nine, ten game and you win, you guess what? You gotta win again. <laughs> so it's like yeah, you know, so can, can we, they make any noise? They could make noise, I guess, but I mean, it's a tough time in the season. They had lost LeBron. They actually played well with, yeah, with no, no LeBron. 100%. But now LeBron coming back, it changes everything. LeBron's so ball dominant. You're going to have to change everything that you've been doing the last couple of weeks. So they have to re-figure out how to win with the combination of AD, D'Angelo Russell, and LeBron. Mm. Um, I don't know if it's going to work out. The West is tough. They're going to be in the – they're at the very least going to be an 8-7, you know, depending on how the plan works. They may be a little bit higher considering, but – I mean, maybe. Are really... they going to win – Are the Lakers seem like they'll probably – Go around 500 from here on out. Which is, I'm just going to be, I'm going to pull up the Lakers schedule real quick just to see what they got going on for the rest of the season. Because again, considering there's only a couple games left, um, am I moving the wrong way? Nope, I'm going the right way. So here we go. This is the Lakers' remaining schedule at Chicago on Wednesday, at Minnesota, not an easy task. At Houston, they'll probably win that game. At Utah, not an easy task. At the Clippers, well, they're home against Clippers, whatever. So versus Phoenix, and then they got to finish against Utah. That is a tough stretch, dude. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, that's so the Lakers two, will probably be in the They have seven game. games left. If they can go three and four, maybe even two and five, they'll find themselves in a in a in play-in play situation. Yeah, the Lakers are going to be in the play-in situation. Wow, man. They're, they're not going to fall short of and that. And you know that's going to equal ratings. But are you asking if they can make noise? Could they make the eight seed? Or the seven, or whatever it turns out. Sure in the plan. can, but could they lose. Are you asking me if the Lakers could lose in the first round? I mean, the Lakers Absolutely are probably going to lose. lose. In the That's first the most round. noise they're going to make, though. And I'm a LeBron guy, so he's down a LeBron down. guy. He is, in fact, a LeBron guy. So again, the NBA rolls on. Uh, last two weeks of the season, the play-in uh, thing. Like I said, next weekend, I believe it starts. Is the seven, eight, nine, ten uh, for the East and the West? We'll see how that all plays out, but it's going to be very. Very interesting on how it all goes down. So, before we get out of here today, obviously, there's always NFL talk. There's always something else going on in the NFL. Um, I'm very curious to hear your thoughts about Chad Reuter, who finally put out his first four round mock draft. You got to be real knee deep in college football like stuff to get four rounds of a mock draft. But I will talk about the first round because, again, these mock drafts look. Are they? Are, they're not bulletproof, right? Like there, there are some flaws, but there are some interesting stories of what could potentially go down either on draft day or a couple days before or any time between now and then. Um, Chad Reuter writes for NFL.com. He thinks the Colts don't take any chances from the four, and they get up to the three. And for the first time, and I don't know, um, I'm not sure if the, I, again I could look it up right now if I wanted to. But when's the last time you saw three quarterbacks back to back to back 
one, two, three. Respectively, he has C.J. Stroud, Bryce Young, and then Anthony Richardson to the Colts. Anthony Richardson and the Colts have been mocked there pretty much everywhere I've seen. So it looks like the Colts are in on Anthony Richardson unless they're really like playing it close to the best. Because unless I know the one Panthers, of these other two teams are more in on Anthony Richardson. The Panthers kind of uh, they showed their hand a little bit. I don't know if you saw this video that leaked online. Um, I believe it was I believe it was C.J. Stroud. Either one of the two, Bryce Young or C.J. Stroud. Maybe it was Smoke Bryce Young. And mirrors. Oh, it was Bryce Young because it was a pro day. So he was talking to, I believe, now I'm going to mess this up. Who is the quarterback? He's like a quarterback's assistant with Frank Reich. Old quarterback who used to play the game. I'm going to mess it up so I won't even men- try to mention who he was. But he's on the staff. And they got close and they embraced. And remember, cameras and mics are everywhere. And they said something. And he's like, well, you know, start looking for real estate in Carolina. Like, that it's it's almost like a uh, oops, <laughs> you know, like done deal. We've tipped our cap. This is why these cameras and, and these things are such HD and it's incredible. Um, why can't I think of the quarterback's name? He used to play in the league for a long Steve time. Steve Berline. No, <laughs> Steve Berline. Jake Gr- Dillholm. No, it, I'm it, thinking of. I want to say more recently retired, but good journeyman of a quarterback. This is gonna bother Panthers? me. Panthers. Uh, ah, maybe, maybe a team. A do Texans. Uh, Maybe ah man, this, I'm not even gonna bother because it's just gonna. I'm gonna sit here with dead air and be like, oh, I'll figure this out eventually, um, but I won't. So I won't do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, now I'm now I'm trying. I, I, have a, I almost I, wanted to say it was England. Colt McCoy, but he's still playing. It's definitely not Colt McCoy, but it's somebody Colt McCoy adjacent. If that makes any sense, I don't know. But anyway, Joey Harrington. No, no, no. Wow, I haven't heard that name since Madden. Really, after he was put on the cover for whatever reason. Um, so that's the first three picks. He does have the Packers and the Jets making this trade. So now, look, I. there's an o- I know, so does most of the people. There's an owners' meeting, obviously, this week. I believe they're going over some rules, competition committee, blah, Guys, blah, blah. Guys, I won't make it. I won't be able to make yeah, it. Yeah, sorry, your uh, partial ownership of the Packers, you have not been invited. I'm not going to be there. Um, no, I was invited. Oh, you were invited got, as an owner. The, yeah. yeah, okay, I got the yeah, I got I got invite. Um, there's a couple of interesting things that they're going to be voting on. Did you? <laughs> this is going to be one that's going to blow your mind. You probably already read about it. Did you hear about the fact that they could potentially flex Thursday night football games? They have to give the teams three weeks' that notice. That ain't going to happen. I mean, it's, it, it's going to happen. It actually. might it's, happen it's because happened. you've seen how many times have we watched a, a Thursday night football game? We're like, ugh, you know, because down the stretch. Sure, on the opening weeks, you're like, those teams are powerhouses. But all of a sudden, one of those teams falls off, and we're in mid-November, and you're like, do I really got to watch – the Texans and the Colts battle for last place in the AFC South, or whatever the case may be. Now, if they see it and they can forecast that the team is junk and the team has been eliminated, they can flip-flop it. Now, what that does to the fans sucks because if you had all intent and you took off and you booked flights and when the schedule comes yeah, out in I May, don't know. that's, that's, that's going to suck, but you're going to have to deal with it. There's issues there. The NFL I don't doesn't care about the fan. Well, Trust me. The, the, NFL, the place is going to pack. That's a tough one. I don't think they're going to be able to do that. They do it on some, for Sunday nights. A lot nights. of money being spent on some of these vacations. That but you they plan. do it on Sunday nights, is what I'm saying. Yeah, Sunday night Sunday football. Night, they, but, they, but it's like if you're going to the sun, game Sunday morning, you could make it work for Sunday night. If I have tickets to go Sunday, I got my hotel booked. It's like no, I'm my flight is Thursday or Friday. So you're good. <laughs> so it's like my flight is Thursday. You want me to now change that? I don't know, man. That's that's dicey. It is dicey, it's but dicey. it's probably going to happen. I, but it's going to happen because you're right. They don't care at the end of it all, but. Usually they don't care when they can't, you know, like when there's just no other option. This right. is like very like, I mean, we don't care about you. <laughs> so in any event, uh, back to the draft. So he does have that draft, uh, that, that draft capital happening where the Packers acquired a 13th overall and 1315 in his mock draft. Isn't that very, isn't sexy as a fan. They, they take, take a tackle at 13, right? You got to protect your investment, I guess. Enjoy the love. If they take love. a tackle, I'll be okay. I'm All right. Like, but if they take a tight end at 15. Right, but I mean, then I see that it's Kincaid going to Dallas. Yeah. Um, so who's the tight end that they had the Packers take? Uh, the the kid from Michigan. Um, now I'm gonna mock. I'm gonna ruin this. Oh, uh, they have. I don't want him. Thirteen there, fifteen. Michael Mayer from Notre Dame. Sorry, right, not Michigan. I do want him. 
Michigan, I was like, I don't know. Green Bay, uh, this is just as analysis. Green Bay must consider a top receiver or tight end on the board at the spot. Mayer is a great fit. Not only his excellence at receiver, but is also power as a blocker, um, which would be a more focus of a Jordan Love expected to run the show in 2023. So, again, we, we I've said that time and time again. Uh, a, a young quarterback's best friend is a good tight end underneath. So, maybe they do. But, yeah, they got Dallas taking to, uh, Dalton Kincaid. Look. We got three great tight. I can't say great, but they're they're good tight ends down there in Dallas right now. Um, after the release, well, the unsigning of one Dalton Schultz, I'm not acquiring another Dalton by any stretch. The biggest thing that I read on this mock draft is that number nine overall. And remember, the Bears had number one. They trade back. They acquire DJ Moore. Here's the ninth pick in the draft. The Bears come up to the podium and pick Bijan Robinson at nine. A running back at nine. Have we not learned our lesson based off of everything that people say? Don't take a running back that early. Don't take him in the first 15. Wait until he's best player available around 25, 26, Dallas. You know, but, like, why Why would the Bears, who just let go of Montgomery. Well, the Bears don't know what they're doing in their front <laughs> office, typically. But this has, nothing, but to do, run this the has nothing to do with the Bears. The Bears didn't make this pick yet. No. If they do, I think it will be very concerning for them because – they have a running back playing quarterback. I was just going to say that. And I don't mean Read that in the sense of bashing Justin Fields, which I will use that line time and time again to, to sure. poke fun. Sure. But the truth of it is, when you have a running back and a quarterback that typically runs, it takes away from the ability to hand the ball to the running back three, uh, 250 times that season. Agreed. Because you see it over and over and over again. Anytime that there's a running quarterback, the running back takes a major hit. Even with Miles Sanders last year, when we're talking specifically about the Mojo market, Miles Sanders started the season higher than where he ended it. He had 13 touchdowns. He had tw- It was just because the market, they didn't expect him to do anything down low even any week because Jalen Hurts is scoring all the touchdowns. That's very Jalen true. Jalen Hurts is going to be running the ball in all short yardage Projections situations. Projections were always low. I don't know if that they're going to be using Justin Fields doing quarterback sneaks if they have B. John Robinson at the nine pick, but I just don't see that happening. I don't uh, think it's a ph- – I don't ph- philosophically – it makes sense because the Bears will hand off or quarterback sneak every play if they could. That's a hell of a running game. But it, <laughs> if it's Justin Fields and B. John Robinson, I mean, that's a hell of a They still have a really game. bad offensive line right now. So I, I don't mean, know what they've done financially. I think uh, they've the added season. some pieces. But look, it's interesting nonetheless. I hope um, they do take him. The Minnesota Vikings make a trade up. They trade to the 10 spot from the Eagles. And the Vikings take Will Levis as their future quarterback because Kirk Cousins coming into a contract year. He ain't getting any younger. That's an interesting one. Um, The first, let's see, the first receiver doesn't go until pick 12, and that's Jordan Addison out of USC. He goes to the Texans. Uh, Paris Johnson Jr. is your tackle that they have over here. Um, One of the better corners in this draft, which I've seen him on. I've actually watched his combine because I was a big Joey Porter fan. I like Joey Porter. I like the way he played. Joey Porter Jr. is the first corner off the board at 14 to the Patriots. Um, Just going down the line here just to see if there's any offensive weapons. A lot of defense. A lot of defense and offensive tackles. We've seen it in free agency. The tackles and the guards on the interiors and the offensive defensive lines, they're getting paid right now. So those are your big investments. There might be a little bit of a shift ski when it comes to who you're paying your big top dollar to. And the only way things function is if your lines are good. Both sides, no? I mean, makes sense. Yeah. So don't take a tackle, Packers. Don't take a a tackle. Jackson Smith and Ninjigba from Ohio State goes 21 over to L.A. Jalen Hyatt. Uh, the receiver out of Tennessee, goes to the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, there was some rumors that now, with DeAndre Hopkins still out there on the on the block, nothing happened with him yet. OBJ has been linked now to the Kansas City Chiefs. So, obviously, what Patrick Mahomes wants and needs is a playmaking receiver. In this situation, they don't make a move, and they take the, the kid out of Tennessee. So... Interesting to see. I mean, I look, think Sky Moore and Kadarius Tony are going to surprise people next year. So those are two guys so that I'd be in on right now in I the mojo so market. So that's that's Sky basically, Moore, Kadarius Tony invest. Yes, I, I mean it's Pat Mahomes' weapons. You look at Kadarius Tony Juju's right now, gone. which is insane to me. Again, well, not really insane because again, what did he do? I know he scored a touchdown in the Super Bowl, so people are just all in on Kadarius Tony. Um, I'm trying to pull up his number right now. It's not loading for me right now. I must have got an internet issue. How about that? Uh, but anyway, I know for a fact Kadarius Tony was super duper low on the Mojo market last year, and he probably hasn't really you know jumped too much. So he probably went up a little bit when Juju signed with the Patriots <coughs> because it definitely opens yeah. up some opportunities. Because but. I think the playmaking ability is there. We've seen it on the grandest stage of them all in the Super Bowl. So 
We'll see about Kadarius Tony. But do yourself a favor, guys, to keep up with us the entire time. Follow us right now on the old social media, okay? This is the Instagram. This is Twitter. And, of course, this is TikTok at Mojo. Um, if you want to see our faces all over the place, check out the TikTok. We're all over that thing. So that's uh, that's fun. Sometimes I just scroll aimlessly and I'll find ourselves. I'm like, oh, this is dope. There I am. There we are. Once mm. again, with a bunch of likes and a bunch of comments. Very And, and not as detrimental as some of the Instagram stuff. Because <laughs> mm. <laughs> I feel like the Instagram... Uh, warriors are a little bit more fierce than TikTok. TikTok is a feel-good thing. Oh, I don't know about that. TikTok might not even exist anymore. <laughs> Sooner or later. Why? You've seen bad things on TikTok? TikTok comment section is wild. Yeah? yeah. I never actually... I stop at the, like, the first bad one. Like, if there's three good ones in a row, I'm like, I don't, nice. I don't, I, don't, I don't comment look. Like, if I see it on Instagram, I get the notification. I'm like, oh. I, don't I had to turn my shit. notifications off of Instagram. But yeah, I mean, like come on, the, I just know TikTok comment section is wild. You, <laughs> so, could, do, you could do a, your own show about the comment section of a TikTok video. Maybe I will. Maybe maybe that could be a show in itself. So guys, thank you guys for watching. Big big week ahead. Obviously, NFL rolls on. A lot of stuff going on about the Washington Commanders right now uh, with the sale of that team, potentially. Daniel Snyder's been denying to even talk to anybody, so that's something to just keep your keep your ears and eyes on. Um, Sean Payton did come out publicly and say, hey, stop offering us for Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton. They're, yeah, here. And then I saw, They're here to stay. I saw it one hour later that Jerry Judy might be a Patriot. <laughs> <laughs> one hour, one hour later, and I also saw something. Bobby Wagner resigns with. I saw something uh, interesting that I'm surprised Seahawks. you didn't drop on me, but maybe because you don't know about it. I have to know about it. Z. I know everything. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Who are the Packers linked to? As far as what position? Backup quarterback. Backup quarterback. You don't know it because you would have said it right. right oh, away. it's uh, well, who is it? Carson Wentz. <laughs> I would take it. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. As a backup? Bro, if Jordan Love stubbed his toe and Carson Wentz goes in, you're sick to your stomach. Don't lie to yourself. Who, he is the who's worst their quarterback backup right now? in the league. Who's what? their backup? They right don't now? have a backup, so they do need a backup. Guess what? Like Cam Newton says, there's like 40 dudes better than Carson Wentz right now. Do not. Cam Newton is not one of them. He is not. He is He is a, uh, man, Shannon Sharp went in. I don't know if you saw that. You're one of them. <laughs> <laughs> You're one of them bad ones, bro. And I was like, ooh, God. Anyway, that's a show. Dave Sturchio, Chris Gucci here at Chop Studios. Enjoy the rest of your Monday. Back here tomorrow to talk more basketball, football, the, the works, everything in the mojo market. We got you covered right here.